in here, our background, that would be our sign here. And we have different text options and then we have our colors here that we can choose from. And once again, we do have that RGB option down here. We also have the ability to add background dancers to our stage. And actually, I just got to go up here and turn dancers on. So there's a silhouette of our background dancers here. And now typically, these would look a little better on the stage if you had the stage prop in there. And we have this option to fit the dancers to the stage. One thing I want to mention, if you might have been noticing, I'm clicking through these presets. And one of the nice features of Stage Effects Pro is the fact that you don't necessarily have to select an object in your scene before you select the preset. These are just single click presets. And that is a nice feature here. So right here, if I just click off of there, I'm not really selecting anything in my scene. I can just simply click here and apply a different pose to the dancers that are here without the need to go through and select the item in my scene tab which is a really nice feature. And it was just another thoughtful, user-friendly feature that's part of StageFX Pro. And then let's go in here and take a look at some of these light beams. I'm going to turn the dancers off for now. And let's take, take a look at some of these light beam options that we have here. And with the light beam options, it's pretty self-explanatory. We can turn beams off and on. So down here, I can turn beam A off. Notice that beam A has disappeared now. To turn it back on, I can choose one of these presets and I can use beam A high on. I'll turn the beam back on. We can change the color of the beam here. So pretty self-explanatory and again, very easy to use. To change the color of beam B, I don't have to go and hunt through and select beam B in my scene tab. All I have to do is come in here and simply double click on the preset for that. So there's beam B. We have beam C here, and then we have beam D. I can choose another different color for that as well. Maybe try a turquoise. And then we have our fan color options. So let me just load up the high res fan in here, and we can change the color of the fan in here with these options here, down here, fan off. And then we have our shade option here, and this is a neat, option to add another yet another layer of tint to the fog area and if I turn the shade on this is we can tint things a little bit if you take a look here I just turn shade on and we have this bluish background going on and again we have the color options to alter the color a bit if we want to and here we have our ambient properties and what the ambient properties do is if your scene is a little too dark for you and if you're not seeing a lot of color in your diffuse properties in some of the objects that you've added to your scene, you can go ahead and add some ambient lighting to your prop here. And this will illuminate your scene a little more. And this would be apparent in software render mode. You really see something going on there in software render mode if you turn on those ambient lights. But for now, I'm just gonna turn ambient lighting off. In the zero presets area, I do wanna talk about these two presets here. I don't wanna overlook that. Right here, what I'm gonna do is go to File, New, Save Changes Before Clearing Scene, No. We're just gonna start a new scene here. And right now, I'm gonna talk about the black preset and the beam preset before I close this video. Okay, so the next thing I wanna take a look at are these two presets here. Okay, and they are but unique. And the reason why I waited for the end to cover these is because Typically, you'd want to go and start using these presets once you really know your way around StageFX Pro. And I'm just going to start with the black preset here. I'm going to double click on this. And as this is loading up, I'm just going to pause the video. Okay, so the preset is loaded up. And actually, if you didn't know your way around StageFX Pro, you'd probably be pretty confused right now because there's actually nothing showing in our scene. But if we go into the scene tab and take a look, everything is still there. So if we go into our content tab, this is a great way just to start from scratch and build your scene up from nothing. So we can go to the floor, and if I needed a floor in a particular scene, I can simply load up this preset here and turn the pattern on. Go to pattern on right here. That's reflections. Pattern on, and let's say I wanted a, the checkerboard floor, black and white. There I have a nice floor for any scene that I want to create. So this is 
just another thoughtful feature of Stage Effects Pro where you have this option where you can start from the minimum preset here and just add certain elements that you need if you want to perhaps use these some of these elements in some other scenes or just to simply start from nothing and build up the entire prop from nothing. But of course you would have to really know your way around Stage Effects Pro to make the most out of this preset and that's why I did wait till the end of the video to cover this because if I started with this in the beginning you'd be a little confused. So there I have the floor turned on. Okay, so I can turn on the fog if I want to. Set a color for that. And this alone would just be a nice, very simple scene here where we have a floor with a reflection and we have the fog in the background. And we can just simply add an object in our scene here and get a nice render. We can add a few more lights if we want to as well. One thing I want to mention about the floor, if we turn this fog off for a moment, take a look at the floor too, and this is a really nice quick way to get a floor in your scene as I mentioned before, but one thing you're going to find with the floor is if you ever try to create your own floor within Death Studio, you're going to find you're going to have this problem with the plane, where the plane is just showing up in the background with a hard edge, and with this floor here, we automatically have our pattern with a fall off effect. So notice how the, the lighting fades to the back. And this is also, again, a, a nice quick way just to get a floor in there with a nice fall off. So that is what the black preset is all about. And we do have all the other things available to us in here. We have our beams in here. If I want to just turn on a single beam, I can do that. There's beam A. Okay, so everything's still in here. The fan is still in here. You can turn on the high res fan. And then back in the zero presets, I'm just going to start a new. Now what I want to do is take a look at this beam preset. And this beam preset is unique compared to all the other presets. And to be quite honest with you, this is my favorite preset. And for you advanced users out there, you're going to love this preset. And for me, the beam preset alone would be enough for me to want to get this package. And even though it is a very simple preset compared to all the other presets. This is a very powerful and useful preset. So I'm just going to double click on this beam preset. As this is loading up, I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so I have my beam preset loaded up into Death Studio. If we take a look at our scene window, we won't see anything, just like in the black preset. But the difference between the beam preset and the black preset is with the beam preset, all we're going to have is our beams showing. Everything else that's part of the Stage Effects Pro prop is not going to be showing up in our scene tab. So in the scene tab, if we take a look, notice we only have four beams. So this is a very minimal preset, but this is also one of my favorite presets here that's part of Stage Effects Pro. Simply because now we have the opportunity to turn on these beams and use them in all of our scenes that we create. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing I want to do is just turn on these beams that I intend to use. And just like I showed you before, we can go into the light beams folder. With beam A, I can turn on beam A. I want to use beam B so I can... Well, actually with beam A, I'm going to undo that. Okay, and I'm going to turn beam A high on. And then beam B, I'm going to turn on beam B high. So I have two beams in my scene now that I can use in another scene. And then with beam C, I'm going to just click on that node here, right click, and I'm going to remove that from the scene. All right, because I'm not going to be using beam C, and I'm not going to be using beam D either. And you don't necessarily have to do this, but it's good practice. If you're not going to be using those beams, it's a good idea just to remove them from the scene because they do take up a bit of memory. They are complex beams, and if you just remove them from your scene, you're going to save some memory by doing that. All right, so I have two beams in my scene tab that I can use to attach to an object in my scene. So as an example here, I'm going to load up the Toon Alien spaceship. Right here, I'm going to load up the Space Saucer, and the Space Saucer has a couple headlights on it, so what we can do is attach these beams to the headlights, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So right now, I'm just going to load up this Space Saucer. As this is loading up, I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so I have my Toon spaceship loaded up into my scene, and now, since the scene is a little dark, I'm just going to create 
a new distant light, 